Hey, Jason Flallon here. Today I got a super productivity hack kind of system, if you will, that I think for most of the things that you do in life, this should supercharge your ability to get more output and even make the output better. We're talking quantity and quality, baby. So let's dive right in. Now, this hack system that I'm gonna break down for you today here, really the, the three key defining parts of it is, one is it automatically makes you comply with the 80-20 rule. 80-20 rule in short is a few inputs are responsible for a majority of the outputs. And so think about a book. If you were to write a book, and I've written a book, and it's like 300 pages long, and I don't know how many words, it's like 80,000 or some odd words in there. Each individual word, those are inputs. But really, do they matter? Do most of those words really matter one way or another? If I chose this word, or if I chose that word, or this or that, or blah, blah, blah. Those things matter very little. But the subject matter, the title of the book, those things matter a tremendous amount. Uh, and how you're going to put the book in people's hands and how they're gonna feel when they receive the book. Those things matter a lot. So in any thing you're doing, a few things will be responsible for a majority of the results that you're seeking. People understand that conceptually, it's hard for them to, to apply it in practice, so this system will automatically apply it in practice. It also eliminates decision friction. So the, the doing of the thing is usually not the most time-consuming part for most people, believe it or not. It's the deliberation of the doing of the thing that eats up the time. If you could just do it, you wouldn't think about it anymore, it wouldn't zap your energy, and you would have all this leftover time where you're not negotiating with yourself. This is one of the reasons I like ice baths so much, because you learn this mode where it's like, I'm gonna do an ice bath today at 9 a.m. And you learn that if you think about it, it's torture. So you just decide you're gonna do it and you block it from your mind and just like a robot almost at 9 a.m. you get in that thing and you do it. It's hard to do it at first, but you discipline yourself through that kinetic focus over time and then it becomes second nature, and then it becomes portable. You can apply this in other areas of your life. And so with more intellectual or abstract concepts, with, which is what most productivity is, it's, it's applied to knowledge work, we can eliminate those decision points much easier. So decisions just get made quicker and they're more accurate, the decisions that get made. This also allows us to gain wisdom, not merely intelligence. So intelligence is something you gather in the laboratory. Wisdom is something you get in the field through experience. So if we can accelerate your ability to acquire the right kind of experience, you will naturally pick up wisdom. Wisdom is largely subconscious, which I really love because the speed of subconscious thought is so much faster than conscious thought where you can more into it and feel your way through and say, okay, this makes sense to do. I'm just gonna do it without deliberation. We skip this and we go straight to this. And that's what becomes really important in terms of productivity and it makes you feel good too. So what is the system? I call it the four by four framework. And essentially what I've discovered is almost any single task that you wanna do in life or anything that you wanna get better at, uh, any skill set you wanna acquire, you can break it down into four components, just four things. And I don't care what it is. Now I'm known as the webinar king, so let's use that as an example. Webinar is an incredibly complex marketing vehicle, which is one of the reasons I think it works so well and so few people can do it so well i.e. that's an advantage in the marketplace for those who can, is a webinar means you've got to be good at public speaking, you've got to be good at educating, you've got to be good at selling, and then you've got to have the technical components to, to stitch together a whole webinar campaign from you know the opt-in page, the follow-up emails, to delivering it live, to doing the replays. There's a lot of moving pieces there. So first of all, we would want to just zoom in. What's the one thing out of all those moving pieces in a webinar that would make the most sense to focus on first? For a lot of people, it's the presentation. And you say, okay, a webinar presentation, typically those go about 90 minutes and there's several hundred slides. Oh, you gotta be a subject matter expert too. A webinar, how do we manage that? Well, we can break it down into four distinct parts. We can say, okay, if I want to tackle creating a webinar, I can say there's an introduction, portion, there's a content portion, there's a transition portion, and then there's a close portion or the pitch portion when you start to sell product. Those are the four things. Now we take this very big undefined concept and we define it with four things. Now this four things in this particular instance is our sections, but they can be characteristics as well. So if you're training a dog, for example, you could say these are the four things that matter the most to have good doggy obedience. And then you could determine, well, what are the four things? I think they're this and then go with it. The biggest challenge people have with this four by four framework is I don't know what four things they are, Jason. And my answer is just pick four things. You're probably gonna get it close enough 
and close enough is close enough. Close enough is good, right? Perfect is the enemy of done. So we just pick four things and we see what happens. We can adjust those four things. You put them out there, you test them and you hypothesize that I think these are the four things, you try them out and then you can sub out one for another one or you can make an adjustment later. But in this particular case with a webinar, we can say there's an intro, there's a content, there's a transition, there's a close. Those are our four elements there. Now we can take any one of those four elements and we break that down into four further elements. So let's take the introduction. A webinar introduction is super important because if you don't hook people right away and get them excited and make them feel they're in the right place at the right time, they're probably not gonna stay. And if they do stay, they're staying with one foot out the door. So are they really there? Yeah. I don't think we're gonna be able to impact them as much. And so we gotta nail the introduction. Now, how do you open something? It's Again, it could be anything. And there's a variety of different techniques to open a webinar strong. But what are the four things that matter the most? I believe that the four things that matter the most in the webinar are getting rapport, instantaneous rapport as, as fast as we possibly can, establishing authority, creating hope and excitement for the future, and attacking the existing objections that limit you from obtaining what you want to obtain or why you're there. I, I want to be able to do this and I can't do this right now. So those are the four things. So rapport, authority, hope, objections, four things. So see, what have I done here? The core four of a webinar are intro, content, transition, close. Each one of those four can have four things broken down further. Rapport, authority, hope, objections. I'm literally like, okay, I got four words. That's all I gotta remember when it comes to this. And you say, Jason, okay, I don't know how to do any of those four things. I get you, okay, that's okay. Let's, first of all, let's pretend you do. If you just say, okay, all I gotta do in the introduction is now rapport, authority, hope and objections and I know how to do three of those four things. Then you just show up and you do those things. You just say, okay, when I create the webinar, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make sure that this is represented in this way, this way, this way. But if you say, well, Jason, I don't know how to establish authority. Guess what we do? Four things. See how this thing fractals out? What are just four ways that are obvious on how I can establish authority? Well, it can be your results, it can be other people's results, it can be the vocal tonality and the delivery because there's a lot in how you speak which determines whether people feel you're an authority or not. If I came out and I said, today on this webinar, we're, we're gonna look at this one. You're like, dude, get out of here, right? Or my personal favorite, when somebody says, we're gonna talk about happiness today. You're like, dude, you ain't the authority on happiness. Aside, <laughs> this is why I got so much trouble in school. I'm like, these are our teachers? What's this teacher gonna teach me? If this is the end result of what they've learned in life, I, I don't want to learn from them. <laughs> Help me. So your results, other people's results, vocal delivery and empathy. So people will say, ah, oh, this person understands me. So you're an authority because they feel like they're understood. So how do you demonstrate that understanding? How do you show your results? How do you show other people have been in, impacted by what you're able to teach? And how do you deliver it in a way where people feel confident and comfortable to listen to you? And you say, well, Jason, I don't know how to do vocal delivery. Well, guess what we can do? We can break it down into four more chunks if we want to. So what we're doing here is we're chunking down and we're chunking up. Initially, when you're starting, you're gonna be chunking down a lot. So what I mean is you say, okay, these are the four things in order to accomplish this thing. I can do one, I can't do the other three. So let me just do that one thing, get that done. What are the three remaining things? Okay, here's, the, here's one of the remaining things. I can do two of the four things required to get that done. So I'll do those two. And then for the other two things, I will chunk those down. And I'll chunk those down to four more elements. And so eventually we'll get them to manageable enough parts. And when we get them done, it doesn't necessarily mean they're accurate or they're correct or they're the best that they could possibly be, but they're done. So we can ship them, meaning we can put them out there in the wild and see what happens and then we can adjust. We observe them, then we adjust them later on. This is where we eliminate decision friction. Where we're like, oh, I don't know if this is the right thing or not. Let me polish it again. Let me try it again. We just, we say, get it out the door, breaking them down to four. Now here's what's really cool. Over time, you can chunk up. A webinar for me, I don't even really necessarily have to break it down into four pieces. The webinar is one piece of a larger system that has three other pieces. So see how I'm chunking up? So in a webinar, you might have to chunk down. You say, okay, Webinar's four elements, but I gotta chunk down to the introduction. But from the introduction, I gotta chunk down into authority. And from authority, I gotta chunk down specifically into how do I get empathy. And then I gotta chunk down maybe again. So maybe you're chunking down four or five levels deep, which is fine, because then you check that off the list. When it's done, it's done. So it's very quickly, what are four things that are kind of important for this? All right, let me see, do all four. If I can't do all four, what is the thing that I can't do? Let me do, let me break that down into four and let me then do those four things. You'll eventually reduce it down to the ridiculous. You'll get it done and done is good. Done is better than better. 
in most instances, especially when you're starting something. So you, you zip it up. But then after a while, you say, okay, I got a good grasp on authority. I know the four elements that, that I can use to get authority. So boom, 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 they're done. And now you don't have to think about authority. And pretty soon you don't have to think about rapport, authority, hope, or objections. So then the introduction is pretty much you channel it. You sit down and say, it's time to create an introduction. And at the speed of thought and creativity, you're just like, boop, 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 good enough. It's done. And then pretty soon you do that with content, transition, close. And then pretty soon, okay, you say, the webinar is one aspect in a larger marketing campaign. You say, okay, what's the positioning of the offer? What's this, what's that, yada, yada, yada. And then you can even chunk up further and further and further. But at any point in time, whenever you're struggling with something, you can chunk it down. And you break it down into four more easily, more manageable, pieces of information. What's really cool too is after a while when this becomes so automated, if you're unsure of something, you just say, I'm gonna let other people decide or I'm gonna let my unconscious decide. I'm gonna let the market decide. You say, okay, I think I got three out of these four elements. I don't know what the other element is, but at this point in time, let's let the market decide. Because even if you get three out of four right, I think you're good. Even if you get two out of four right, I think you're better than what most people are because you're accelerating the ability to have it be in front of people. Now, the only psychological challenge you're gonna have with that is if, if you're not prepared to be in front of people, you will find ways to self-sabotage. That is a whole nother video. And I address that in a lot of different ways throughout a lot of these different videos here. But the procedural aspect is anything can be broken down into four more manageable pieces of information. And if you can't manage those four, whatever you can't manage, break that down into four until you can break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. Again, like with authority, and by the way, some of these then become forkliftable, if you will. I can now take elements of authority that I use on a webinar introduction and I can apply them in a YouTube video, for example. I can apply them in writing an email. So I like these universalities of like, these are the elements. Here's how I apply it over here. Now I can also apply it over here and I can apply it over here. So at first it'll feel like a lot of work for very little in terms of I do this and then it only is useful here, but then you will generalize over time. It will become more unconscious in multiple other areas. So then when you're building other systems and you're putting in these elements, you're like, oh, okay, well, I gotta create hope over here. I know how to do that because I learned it over here in this part of this system or I gotta handle objections over here. Okay, well, three fourths of the context still works, but one fourth doesn't, so I gotta sub out one thing for this model over here and put in another thing in its place. Now, we could take something as complicated as nutrition, which is unbelievably complicated and confusing and contradictive. And for me, I, my four core elements of nutrition these days are clean whole foods, meaning that grass-fed, not farm-raised, right, and <laughs> wild-caught. Try to eat as much whole foods as possible. Intermittent fasting is a big deal for me in terms of how it works for me personally. So typically it's don't eat for more than you do eat. <laughs> Large window of not eating per day, small window of eating. I tend to try to avoid as many carbs as possible. I don't have to go into ketosis or not. So make sure I get more protein and less carbs because I'm, I'm looking to get more functional as well as the aesthetical strength too. So proteins are, are more important for me now. So those are primarily the, the things is whole foods, clean sourced eating, intermittent fasting, less carbs, mo more protein. And I can manage that without thinking about it, without counting calories, without being too concerned. It just happens on autopilot for me. However, when I started, I had to have a decision on what types of foods should I eat and when should I eat them. And that was kind of complicated. Should I eat these foods then and eat less of these foods and more of those foods? And pretty soon, if I just avoided processed foods, it just took care of everything. But initially it was like, okay, what types of processed foods are permittable for now as I make this transition? What types are not? What types of whole food are good? Do I have to eat grass fed all the time? Originally it wasn't, because you build up these blocks with these rule sets in place. But if you're having trouble in any one of these areas, you can chunk down. Design a system that has four rules to determine when you eat and when you don't eat. Follow those four rules for a period of time, observe what happens, and then make adjustments. We attempt, we observe, and we, we adjust. Attempt, observe, adjust. How do we attempt something? We get four elements. If those four elements still leave us feeling incomplete, we take any one of those or all of those and we break them down into four other elements until we have something nice and manageable. It's like a mind map in your mind that can fold and unfold and collapse and uncollapse at will. You just become unattached to the results right now. You say a majority of success in any endeavor is just putting something out there to gain experience. So that's the attempt portion. So I'll attempt it because I'm only gonna manage these four things. At any given time, I need four things to move forward and get something done attempt it, and then we observe it. Now that it's out there, what's happening? Sometimes you'll observe something and say, okay, that needs to go in the trash can. We were way off. Good. Now you're one step closer to being on. 
Sometimes it'll work better than you think, and you say, fantastic. Now you can move that more into the unconscious department of your mind sooner. You say, okay, I'll even think less next time when I apply this, because I seem to have already nailed it. Or you're like, it's a mixed bag. I see some merit to this, but there's some issues with that, and that's when we can go back and adjust one of the four elements. Or we can break it down into four other smaller elements to adjust it and then chunk back up, and then we attempt it again. So attempt, observe, adjust. After we adjust it, we cycle back and we attempt it again until we get to a point where we're, we're happy with what we have. And we say, this thing can just run forever now, and that's good enough. So there you go. It's not the end-all, be-all. It's not the panacea of productivity. It is a model to consider. It is a tool in the toolkit. Try it. Let me know how it works for you, and I'll see you on the next video.